I hope everybody's gotten that Super Bowl feel out the way. I want to welcome you to the show today. And so today we're talking about the Masonic Apron. And definitely before I even get started, I want to definitely send blessings to you and your family, your friends, your loved ones, those in your Masonic jurisdictions, to the Sister of the Order of the Eastern Star. I want to wish everyone health and strength and definitely keeping each of you in my prayers as we uh, are in our warm homes tonight while others are finding places of shelter to sleep in. But I definitely want to remember each of you uh, in my prayers. And I hope that you do the same uh, for those in your areas, your significant others, your family and friends. Let's just continue to remember each other in our prayers. So as I get started tonight, definitely want to say welcome to the show. Definitely want to send a big shout out to um, the most wishful Keystone Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. I appreciate Brother Darius Green to reaching back out to me. Uh, in regards to our last conversation that we've had, definitely want to say good evening. And uh, to all my brothers from the mosque, assalamu alaikum, uh, shalom, peace, motep, hip tep, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I just want to be, uh, I, I, it's just good uh, to be in your presence today if you're coming online. And it's just good to be amongst brothers and sisters as we begin uh, the show. So today we're going to talk about the Masonic Apron. The Masonic Apron. And I know that a lot of us has presented our, uh, our Masonic Apron as we begin our journey uh, into the Masonic Order as an into apprentice. And it is probably one of the most misunderstood things that we wear. And I often, when I was an apprentice, I used to wonder, why, why do Masons wear this apron? Uh, we talk about how honorable it is and we talk about how gracious and beautiful it may look and how adorned it is but why do masons wear aprons that is the question for the night that is the topic for today's show so the lines are open 619-286-0642 we're going to keep those lines open for about another hour we're not going to hold you long tonight, but I'm just glad to have you on. And greetings, Brother Terrell. Greetings, New Era King. Greetings, Vincent. Greetings, Brother Brown. Greetings, Brother uh, Gilmore. So, uh, also, for those of you who actually gave me a call in regards to the Masonic Secrets, uh, <laughs> I know I shock you with the answer, but I just want to, I got one question. For those of you who called and asked me about the Masonic Secrets, is it true what I told you? That's all I'm going to ask. And if you're online tonight, if you can verify that you called and asked me, what was it? Did I not tell you the truth about it? And does it make plenty of sense? I just want to I just want to know because I don't want to give you anything that you're going to be like, no, nah, no, this is factual. This is all this is all uh, ritualistic base. And I go a little deeper because what happens is a lot of times people don't get in it. Brother Bright, unless you want to talk to me on live right now, how can I help you? Okay. All right. Okay. Later. Uh, that was Brother Amon Bright. He was hooking me up. Hello? Hello? Well, I guess he didn't want anything. He hung up or she didn't want anything. So this line is open not only to brothers, but also sisters. The call in number tonight is 619-286-0642. That's going to be open for a little while longer. But definitely tonight we're talking about the Masonic Apron. And, and, and it, anybody can team in on this. Anybody can team in on it. Let me know what you think before I go into detail in regards to the Masonic Apron. And i like to know and hear your opinion in regards to the Masonic Apron. Why do we wear it? What is the significance of the Masonic Apron? And where did you first uh, actually believe that it may have come uh, to be part of the Masonic wear or garment? You know, so think about that for a minute. And I just I just want you to just want you to, you know, throw some in it and let me know. And definitely to those of you who have hit me. Up on the side, yes, my family is well. Things are okay with me. I, I don't have any complaints. None that I wish to share at this time. <laughs> you know, life is life. And I'm, I'm grateful and blessed. 
uh, to be able to assist or aid or uh, just just grateful that my family is helpful is uh, is in good health, you know. So definitely we're gonna move on with that tonight. So if you have a question tonight in regards to that Masonic apron, you can call in or you can hit it in the chat and we're gonna get right to it. But for those of you who are on right now, and I know most of you are Masons, what do you think about the Masonic apron? You know, where did it come from? Why do we wear it? I mean, those are questions we should ask ourselves uh, when we when we come into this great organization uh, of Freemasonry, because I know that there are many uh, different Masonic aprons uh, that I've seen and had the experience of being around brothers I wasn't familiar with. I was just familiar with the common wear, the white apron or the one in blue trim with the compass and square with the all seeing eye on it. I was just used to those, but... Until I started traveling a little bit more, I started seeing red, purple, gray, just all sorts of aprons. And so with that being said, I'm, now I'm really curious in regards to why do we wear the Masonic apron? That's my question for the night. Now, I found my answer, but I want you to tell me what you think in the chat. I want you, I either call in, call in number again. It's 619-286-0642. Let's say Brother King says, wear it because it looks okay. Damn, good. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on now. You got to do better than that. Come on, bro. It represents your Grand Lodge. It's a function. Nah. Come on now. Come on, Master Masons. Come on, Inner Apprentice. You guys got to know why we have the aprons. You got to know where did they originate from. I mean, I, I, I spoke about a week or so ago in regards to the first um mentioned that apron was in the was in the bible it was in genesis uh where adam and eve uh uh um uh, sold fig leaves or put fig leaves together as an apron uh so that's the that's one of the very first mentions but it's also mentioned again in the bible but i'm not going to share that with you until you tell me what you think about it because i'm gonna try to put it all together to make it real simple nothing complicated but I think it's beautiful that, you know, we should uh, definitely know why we wear the apron. Why do we wear it? You know, yeah, it looks nice. I mean, there's some nice aprons out there. But just because they look nice, why do we wear them as Masons? What is the significance of wearing them? You know, we now we, we know that the story that was told to us in regards to Masons wearing the apron it was the story of the uh, stone masons, you know, why they wore aprons. But no, we're speculative masons. So why do speculative masons wear aprons? That's the great questions right there. That's 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 the one. Why do speculative masons wear apron? We know why stone masons did it. We got that part and we emulate that. But why do we do it? Why? Oh, yeah, a badge of innocent, right? Oh, it's a badge of innocent. Yeah, but why do we wear it? I'm just asking. I, I, I know I wear, I got about three or four aprons, and I think they all look, they bad. But why do we wear the apron, you know? Okay, we must say, took the white out of the, Cautious mountains. <laughs> Some of them naked and made them wear it. Oh man, y'all got jokes tonight. You gonna take uh you gonna take them out of the mountains and make them wear the apron, bruh. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, traveling man is a badge of a mason. I know that. It is the badge of a mason, but why do we wear it? Just because it's a badge, that's great. The police officers wear badges too. But why do we wear the apron what is so significant about the apron for us uh traveling man that's my question for the night it pondered me so i did some digging and i'll share it with you but i want to hear from you to distinguish the brothers in the show our sacrifice okay all right okay so grand lodge officers have a certain uh um uh, uh, uh masonic apron and uh, those in the what we call the Blue Lodge or uh, Red House have a different color apron. But why do we wear the aprons? 
It's a badge of innocence. Got it. But why do we wear the apron? Come on, brother. I know some smart brothers out there. And it may be some smart sisters out there, too. I'm just asking. I mean, now we know that some sisters wear aprons, too. So let's not, let, let's, let's be, this is open. This is an open forum. You don't necessarily have to be a Mason to tune in. But I'm kind of curious to why Masons wear aprons. This, this is really no secret. I found it in the Bible. Uh, but still it, it should be known as to why we wear the apron you know and i'm quite sure many of you are probably familiar with it is more ancient than the roman fleets of rome and and the Rome uh, and, and it says more ancient than the roman fleets of rome and should be worn uh, holy and all we got that part but there's more to it there's more to it and i know that you brothers are smart enough to know why do you wear an apron brothers Oh, wait a minute, brothers. Let me see. This brother said, okay, the Quran, cave page 76. Oh, wait a minute. You said page 76. Hold on. I'm going to have to look that one up, bro. You said page 76. Hold on. 76, 76, 70. Wait a minute. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Work with me. Work with me. Page 76. It says on page 76, I'm, I'm in Surah 3. I may be in the wrong one, but it says page 76. Is it 195, 196? Okay. Okay, I don't see anything yet. Be more pacific. Oh, wait a minute. No, be more pacific to me. I got my Quran, so uh, I'm definitely looking in it. Uh, so there the Lord accepted them, their supplications and answered them. Never will I allow uh, to be lost the works of any of you, be he male or female. You are members of one another. So those who encouraged and were driven out from their homes and suffered and suffered harm. Hmm. Nope. I don't see it. Help me out, somebody. Help me out. Why do Masons wear the Masonic apron? We know the symbolism. It's the badge of a Mason. Simple as that. But why do we wear it? Oh, okay. Given the surah. Okay. Okay. Give the surah. All right, I'm waiting on them to give the surah. Take your time, brother. Okay, I will. I'm going to take my time. The idea is that the Holy of Hollies is the male growing areas. The genetic principles is the sex act, so on and so forth. Huh. That's pretty interesting, brother. About the idea that the Hollies of Hollies. In the male Gorn area, it's okay. That's pretty interesting. All right. That's going to give me something else to take a look at. The story of Mosa, of Moses is called the cave. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Got to go. I can, I can pick it up now. I can get it. Egyptians were the first to wear it. Okay. We own something now. We own to something now. All right. The sun is 18 in the Quran called the K. Oh, the surah is 18. Now, y'all got to, y'all finna put me to work. The surah is 18 in the Quran called the K. Oh, man, y'all finna put me to work. Why y'all doing me like this tonight? I thought, come on now. The boy, he said the surah is 18, surah. Eighteen silver, eighteen, eighteen silver, eighteen silver case. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. That's a seventeen silver, eighteen silver. You said it's called the cave. Okay, I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. Now I, I'm not as prolific 
as some may be in the uh okay is it before or after uh Miriam is it before or after Miriam okay Sura nope that's not it Okay, question, is it before Miriam? Okay, it's Miriam. I don't see the cave yet. I'm, I'm working with it. I'm working with it. I'm working with it. Wait a minute, he said page 76. Man. See, the server is not like a regular book. I just want y'all to know. It don't roll like that. Okay, the final four. Oh, nope. Let me see. Y'all gonna make me do something else. I gotta I gotta go into the glossaries and look it up from there, cause I'm not as prolific with some. Okay. All right, I'm gonna need some help trying to find it in my Quran. I'm like I said, you know, but um, let's get on with it. You know, let's let's move on with it. Greetings from the Bahamas. Welcome, brother Corey. Uh, well, I got a grandson named brother Curry. You know, so let's look at this thing. Uh, from uh, as I continue to try to look at it in the Quran, but let's let's take a look at it. Let's see. Can we uh, can we come up with something? All right. Now, the first mention of of it be, is in Genesis for the Bible thumpers like myself. You know, I can I can tell you that the first mention of the uh, of it is in the is in there. Okay, it's in the um, it's in Genesis and where where it was in the garden. Now, the second mention. Of it is going to come out of um, is going to be mentioned in the Old Testament again. This is where it was mentioned with Melchizedek. If you know anything about Melchizedek, he was of the lineage of the high priest. Okay, so Melchizedek being the most high priest and the first to wear the apron. If you will go and look his name up in the scripture, it would tell you that he wore an apron, and it actually comes from the religious customs. It was a religious custom that they wore the apron. And if you know anything in regards to Freemasons, you would know that as you proceed into the Royal Arch degree, see, that is the completion of the Master Mason degree. And there you will find uh, the high priest, you know, as the title or is bestowed upon that individual. And you will learn other things in regards to that because it deals with the Old Testament and Christ. And this is where you go and find out the essence of wearing the apron. And like I said, it's first mentioned in the Bible in regards to a, secondly mentioned in the Bible in regards to a religious, uh, uh, um, it's part of the religious, uh, I don't want to say costume, but the religious wear that they, that the high priest wore. And Melchizedek being the most high priest wore an apron. And it goes back to the reason that we wear aprons, where that brother spoke of those in the Egyptians. The Egyptians were uh, adorned. They wore aprons also. And then another brother spoke and said that it had things to do with the male genitals. I want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, he spoke like that. And that is absolutely correct, my brother. It does. And then another brother said <laughs> he... <laughs> they we they went to the they went to the caucus mountain when they came down we made them wear aprons oh, oh come on now somebody come on now don't do me like that don't do me like that but let's really get into it so that gives you a brief uh, a, a a little brief uh <clears throat> about it so as we gather more thoughts about it so we talk about the 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 ancient masonic apron it is an element or emblem of innocence we know that it is the badge of a mason we know that more ancient than the golden fleece of rome we got that or the roman eagle uh when worn uh worthy um uh, more honorable than anything of the star garter that a potentate king can bestow upon you we got that 
that is uh, high. That is how high the apron is. This is why we must take care of the apron. But why do we wear the apron? It's because it is worn by noble men, men of purity, men of innocence. This is why we wear the apron. The reason why Masons wear the apron is to show you that you are a man of character, a man of innocence, a man of nobility. Oh, yeah, that's the fact. That's why you wear the apron. Yeah. Because at one time it was it was only those of the high priest that wore aprons. And you being a Mason, your more your character is supposed to be higher. Okay? See I, that that is truly how it's tied in. And you can you can like you can look this up for yourself. You can definitely I encourage you to do that. But this is why we wear them. We know that we talk about how honorable it is, but the reason we wear them, uh, those beautiful aprons with all sorts of symbols and things on them, is because the high priest wore those aprons. Okay, that's why speculative masons wear them. And as the brother was saying in regards to covering the male genitals, and as I spoke uh, last week about when the flap is uh, worn up versus when the flap is worn down and the significant meaning behind that. Because it all ties in. The apron means a lot to a mason uh, in regards to them wearing it. You know, it, it, the purity of life and the rectitude of conduct is essential and necessary to gain admission into the celestial lodge. See, that's all ties in together with, with, with the Masonic apron, okay? And then, even in primitive times, in primitive times, you know, the lambskin or white lather apron, as some may say, is an emblem of innocent. I've said that three or four times. But it gets deeper than that because when you talk about primitive times, you know, and them wearing the Masonic apron or wearing an apron, during that time, you know, people take it and wipe their hands on and do all that. But we look at it as a badge of innocence, a lambskin apron. The lambskin means that the lamb was a sacrifice of innocence for your sins. Think on that. Think on that for a minute. Just think on it. I'm just saying, just just let it just let it marinate for a second. You know, just just let it. I'm a kid. You, I was going to say I was going to kill that dog. But, I, boy, if I do any harm to that dog, my granddaughter is going to have a fit. But I'm going I'm to lock him up, though. I'm going to lock him up because he be disturbing me. For real. I got, you know, he just, oh. You know, maybe I just need to close the door. Can't even close the door because it's closed. Yep, yep, yep. But anyway, so what's your thoughts on that? Why did Arbiter Masons begin to wear the apron is even better question. Okay, it like I said before, the reason why operative masons begin to wear the apron is because of the high priest. Okay, the high priest wore aprons. Men of nobility, men of innocence, men of character. That is why uh, speculative masons began to wear aprons. That is why, brother. I want to hear his. I want to hear. I want to hear his Quran. You know what? Whoever can find it in the Quran, because I didn't find it right readily, post that. I like to see it myself. Now I gotta go and really take my time and more knowledge, or we can say extra knowledge. Okay. All right. The craft and its symbols in the book. Okay. What kind of questions are y'all asking? I see you trolling much. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of trolls out here. But the question we we're asking is why do operative mason, no, why do speculative masons wear Masonic wear aprons? You know, that's not that's not a big secret, but for if anybody wants all they gotta do is look in scripture. And one brother posted look in the Quran, Sarah uh, under uh uh he says Sarah number eleven. It was supposed to be on page 76, and it said it dealt with the cave, which meant Moses. I haven't personally been able to find it as of yet, but for those of you who are astute 
in the Quran and can really find it, please post that. Post that whole, post that little section right there. But I can tell you if you go and read it in regards to Melchizedek, he actually wore an apron because he was, he was not considered, but he was a high priest. So just think on that for a second. That is the second time that you will ever hear anything about the apron because the first time you heard about it is in the garden. So, uh, as I mentioned before, that is why uh, we wear the Masonic apron. I'm, I got my book. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to just see what I can find in it. The Quran isn't in the end all to be all. Neither is the Bible. We are reading both in English. First mistake. I can agree with that. But however, if this is the information we have, is what we have. Now, if you want to post something else, anybody. Is that cocaine or cocaine? Brazil or Brazil? I'm messing that name up. Brother, if you want to post something else, go right ahead and do that. And to help us out a little bit, because yes, I'm reading from the English. I'm reading from the Bible, NIV, International, whatever, King James Version. And then I got the Quran. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm giving what I got. Now, if you got more you want to share, please do that. Oh, yeah, Brother Terrell, I got you. I got you. Okay, I'm going to have to check that, sir, 24. I came across that, sir, but I didn't. Okay, he says, sir, 24. I'm about to go to Sora 24, Sora 24. He says Sora. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming in, everybody. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm trying to find it in the Quran here, but I can't. I'm going to go a little bit farther than what I could find in the Quran because one brother said English is the first mistake we'll make what we have because that's the only language I speak is English. Now, if somebody else speaks another language that can break it down pretty good, I appreciate it. I know that Brother House, when he's on, he can really shake the trees because he's fluent in Arabic and, and, and probably a couple of other languages. However, I'm sticking with English and I mess that up a lot sometimes, so I'm all right with me. Yes, you need, <laughs> I read all the books. Okay. All right, brother, if you read all the books, then you know, maybe you can enlighten us on the Masonic on the Masonic apron because the information I found is the reason why we wear it is because it was it was it was through the high priest that wore it. And if you know anything in regards to the first three degrees, when you enter the holies of hollies, that is considered the high priest. And you know, uh, as we know, because now you're getting ready to go into the royal arts degree. Okay. Now, the oil, in the royal arch degree, you have that person whose head is called the high priest. Okay? So, this is what I've come across that brings me to the conclusion of why we wear the apron as masons. A man, a, 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 a person who's, who has good character, his morals and values are that of a person who's being innocent. Uh, of an upright man. This is why we wear apron. If you know anything about the lambskin apron, a lambskin means innocent. So, and this is probably why they call it the badge of a mason also. You know, but um, as we indulge ourselves in this, we are reminded of how, uh, how uh, great this fraternal order is. Because we're looking at it from the point of view of saying, great, this is why we wear this apron. Not just it's a beautiful apron. Yeah, it's beautiful. But this is why we wear it. It, it is ancient. Look at the ancient Egyptians that they wore those aprons. It meant something. It is just not meant to be worn and saying, hey, you little, my apron cost me two or $300. No, it's bigger than that. So we take that and really begin to look at why do we wear it this way? Or why do we wear it that way? Why is the flap up versus flap down? I touched on a little of that last week. The unique thing is, is that we have to bring that whole concept into, into plain view and 
share that with our inner apprentices, our fellow craft and our master masons on the reason why we wear it. Not just because in ancient times, the, 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 uh, Arp no, the, uh, the Arbiter Masons wore them. Well, we know they worked in the quarries. You know, they can wipe their hands on it. They can put their tools in it, their lunch in it. We've heard the stories, but I'm talking about operative masons. You know, we are we are a different craft, all right? The symbolism that we share are, 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 are special, you know, are special. The, the working tools that we see that, that normal people take and do physical work with them, we do spiritual work with them. Talk back to me now. You can't tell me that masons don't do spiritual work with the working tools that are given to them because that's how it's taught. And if you don't think so, think of that trial, brother. You know, think of think of what the trial means to when you are a master mason. Isn't that one of your working tools? Because you have eight. Well, you have eight emblems. Yeah, you have eight emblems. And the trial is one of them. You know, and how special that trial is. I'm just not talking jurisdiction. I'm talking across boundaries. And that's the great. See, no matter where you go in Freemasonry around the world, when you talk about the trial and those instruments and tools that we use on this spiritual journey. Because that's what you're on. Because, like I said before, each person has traveled upon the level of time to which no traveler returns. You remember when I spoke about the other day how we travel, you know, Mason said, well, I'm traveling east. You're not traveling east. Let's let's kill that. I'm going to share that with you one more time. You're not traveling east. If you look in your ritual, you're traveling the way of the sun. You are. You're actually traveling west. You're traveling west. Yeah. You are. And there's a particular reason why you travel that way. There's a start and a finish. There's a start and a finish. Oh, in a midway. So you, so when you begin, you begin in the east. And I'm even, you could take that through the stages of life because you know for yourself, just as you begin that stage in life, you start out in an apprentice, youth. Fellow craft, manhood. Master Mason, a man of age. Well recommended. You know, you, you, you're you that it factor. You're able to take care of your family. Okay. You ain't really running the streets. You know, you're doing everything in temperance. You know, you, you're keeping everything in due bounds. You're not necessarily just out, just, just wilding out. You, you're tapered now. You know, as a master mason, you calm down. You're able to, to do those passions, right? However, when you come in as an apprentice, that zeal for the organization, that, that like, yeah, I'm here, you know. But when you become that fellow craft, you know, uh, 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 that, that man, you kind of like, yeah, okay, I got this. But when you're a master mason, it'd be like, you know, you don't have to argue with nobody when you're a master uh, 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 a master mason that knows his works. He doesn't have to argue with you. He doesn't really have to uh, uh, put you down or say crazy stuff to you because he understands the works. He understands his duty. He understands his emblem. A, a master mason that understands his work is one that you should always look up to. Not them crazies. Not the ones who are out there beating the bushes talking about somebody's jurisdiction. Them crazies. I'm talking about the ones that can set you down and have a conversation in regards to the philosophy and teachings of Freemasonry. Not just the Q&A stuff, but the good stuff. You know, what does this stuff really breaks down? What does it really mean like the apron and why we wear it? That stuff right there is essential to the knowledge of an intro apprentice, a fellow craft, or a master mason. So when you enter the Holies of Hollies and, and you know that they have the, the Ark of the Covenant with Ark of the Covenant with the cherubims, you know, those arc, those archangels with their wings tilted. Oh, it's a beautiful thing when you see it made of gold. That thing is awesome. Oh, for sure.
It keeps us, okay, chasing through our actions. I like that, Brother Gilmore. That's great. Oh, okay. Oh, Brother Shahid. Yeah, you speak that Arabic. Okay, Sunni. Okay. Break that down then. I need a little help tonight. So what we're trying to do is just break down some common stuff to the Masonic brother. You know, besides what besides what we usually hear, let's just really indulge ourselves into the things that really uh, uh, bring forth to us. Okay, I have seen the apron tied to the number seven in various ways. Oh yeah, so you can even break that down. The number seven, even in your pending bodies. Uh, in the philosophy degrees on the Scottish right, even on the York right side, the seven keeps popping up. If you go into Revelations, the seven is a it, whew, it pops up all the time in Reve Revelation. But the unique thing is, is that even if you're wearing your let's say you're wearing the Masonic apron, right? And you throw that flap up, you got seven corners. You got three on the top and four on the bottom. Seven. So that's that's a beautiful thing. That seven is awesome. Greetings, everyone who's coming on tonight. Greetings. Oh, a newly raised. Uh, okay, well, welcome, Brother Bridges. No, is that? No, no, I'm sorry. I, 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 I apologize, bro. I thought you was Brother Bridges, but you're not. So Brother Bush says, checking in. Greetings, brothers. I'm a new raised brother. To the subline degree. Well, Brother Bush, welcome. I appreciate that. Thank you, Brother Bush. The Divine Nine. And that's 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 the Greek fraternity thing, right? The Divine Nine. Brother Brother Gilmore, you might want to elaborate that on a little bit more. The Divine Nine. <laughs> but uh let's get back to this, let's get back to this apron. Because it is a special thing. This apron is special, man. You know, especially when you get down to really breaking that thing down and 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 why do we wear it you know are you a man of good character are you a man of innocent moral and upright before your community are you that person because that's why we wear the apron you know think about that just for a second are you that individual or are you one that like to keep up hell you know, when I say keep up hell, you know, keep that fire going, you know, like, I can't stand that brother, and I don't like that brother, and that brother over there. Are you that type of person? Or are you the type of person that say, yeah, you know what, let's have this conversation. You know, if I can prove myself worthy and well qualified, you know, to you, are you the type of person that turns your back and just walk away because that person is not with you or in your jurisdiction? Or are you going to say, how you doing, my brother, at this time, we cannot have this conversation? There's plenty of ways you can inform a brother that you are not on, on that you don't want to have the conversation, you know. But whenever you greet or meet a brother, greet and meet out of respect. The process is as we go and learn these different avenues and things about masonry, it's supposed to help us to become better and grow to be the best individual we can be, you know. But until we begin to apply that and look at it for what it is. We're not going to get that. We're not going to get it because you know, we're blinded by the light. <laughs> blinded by the light. You know, come on now. I'm just saying. So, once again, the call in number for tonight, 619-98, no, 619-286-0642 is the call in number. So we can get right on in it, you know, for those of you who want to. And uh, it says the original... Brother Shahid, the original Arabs is African brothers research. That's true. Huh? You, you, you ain't going to get that argument out of me. You're not going to. No, we're going to agree too much on that. But tonight, as we discuss the apron, and if any of us know about the apron, we know that the Egyptians wore the apron. We know that. And it and it, and also gave you a, a class status. Wearing the Masonic apron uh, no, wearing the apron in ancient times with the Egyptians gave you a class status, an overseer type of status. 
Seven chakras. Okay. Just seen that one. Seven heavens, seven wonders of the world. Yeah. All right. So as we progress in this thing we call Freemason, we're going to begin to see some things change. Okay. It is just not the same. But what we have to do is indulge ourselves in finding out. I mean, even as we go through the into apprentice degree, understand your password, you know, understand the connection, your password to the sisters. OK, understand that and respect that, brothers. Then as you progress and go into the Fellowcraft degree, understand those two passwords, all right? And why the brothers was trying to escape and get over to Egypt. You know, everything takes place over in Egypt during those times. It was, this, it was one of the centers of, of, uh, of the civilization, as we know it. It was a center of civilization, you know? So everything that we look at, Moses went through Egypt, Christ went through Egypt. Everything went through Egypt. So even in your fellow craft degree, as you began to study and read, you will find that they tried to escape and go through Egypt. But because they didn't have passports and because they didn't know the quite the uh, the pronunciation, certain things occurred as they tried to cross Joppa. You know, and, and don't and don't forget now and don't forget. Not only did that take place, you got to look at that wayfaring man. Think about that wayfaring man. What, what did he know or did not know? I mean, there's a lot of things happening in this thing we call Freemasonry. How do we connect the dots on that? And tonight is just one of those dots that we're looking at, and that is the Masonic apron. And I'm not talking about some big secrets. I'm talking about purely the Masonic apron. And for those of you who watched the last show where I talked about the secrets of masonry and for those of you who gave me a call and there was quite a few of you that gave me a call in regards to that i i believe the answer i gave you was was a factual answer because that's what i came across and i wanted to share it with you and if you and, and for those of you who talk to me please you know if you see something different or thought something different let me know tell me where you got your information from you know because masonry is not complicated. It's only complicated. It's only complicated to those who have not yet been initiated into it. I went to. Oh, hey, bro, say you went to visit Egypt. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Get out of this. Get it out of this country and go somewhere else sometimes. I wanted to call brother Tony. Uh, oh, the number, the number is 619-286-0642 if you want to call, brother. 619-286-0642 is the number you can call in tonight. Tonight's topic is the apron. The Masonic apron is tonight's topic. And I'll tell you something. If you go back and look at some of my previous shows, there are certain things I was doing in the show that I don't think most of you paid any attention to. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, I want to really say what I was doing, but man, it, it is just so easily done till a lot of people miss them. You know, these are some of my early shows I did, and I just wanted to see how many people would actually catch what I was doing in the shows with my hands. But nobody really called me on it, so I was like, okay, it's, it's cool, it's cool, you know. But it's all good, it's all good. You know, sometimes the sleight of the hands will tell you a whole lot about a person and what degree they may have or where they may be at, you know. And also for the sisters, I was doing some things with my hand in regards to the sisters too, you know. But, uh, you know, some, I don't know, some people catch it, some people don't. But tonight we're talking about the apron. The Masonic apron. I want. I want to hear you. I want to hear what you got to say. I want to read what you're posting. Vertical division divided the body into forces. Oh, I didn't see that coming, brother Mike Alex. I didn't see that one coming. The apron, spring, string, crossing, the vertical division dividing the body into four 
sections. That you know, I didn't even think about that. I did not think about that one. Wow. Brother Maddox, I liked that. I didn't I I, I likes that, bro. I likes that. Untrained eye. <laughs> yeah, some eyes, you know, some eyes are just untrained. Ugh. You know how we do it. I'm just saying, some eyes are just untrained. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was watching Robin Hood tonight, the movie Robin Hood with Jamie Foxx in it. Man, that's a good movie. That's a good movie. If you're a Mason and you enjoy trying to find out things in a movie, that's one you should have. Hello? Hello? Hello, who am I speaking with? Uh, Iblis Khan. Say that name again? Iblis Khan. It's not my real name, but... Oh, okay, we'll go with that then. Uh, I'm not going to even try to pronounce uh, it, brother, because I don't want to mess that name up. But uh, talk to me. Alright, um, so, first of all, I just, just want to say that I'm not a Mason. Okay. Alright, um, but I like how you're very, very open, you know what I mean? Like a lot, I met a lot of Masons, and they're like a lot of you know some of them were assholes, and some of them were kind of like you know kind of you know just ignore you. You know what I mean? Okay. So, but you were cool as dude, and I like that. And um, well, I actually uh, purchased a, a a Masonic Bible. Okay. From, uh, Amazon. I don't know if that's wrong or not, but uh. Well, you purchased it's your book, man. I can't, it's your book, dog. <laughs> and go ahead, talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, uh. I found a, so basically, so I read this Bible, and then, um, hold on, it says right here in the apron, about the apron, let me just find the page real quick, mm -hmm. a second, uh -oh. okay, I'm sorry, just give it one minute, man. You almost there? Almost there. Almost there. Alright. I'm going this way. Only because like this one kinda resonated with me. And, um, oh, it resonated with you. Well you you know what I'm waiting on you to do, brother? What's up? I'm waiting on you to become I'm, a mason. I'm on it. Huh? So it says right here that we're the supreme architect of the universe forever proceeds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was it? That's what. That was it, because it says right here, we're the supreme architect of the universe where forever proceeds. So, basically, how it means that we're the supreme architects, right? Who is the prince? Who is the Amazing. supreme? Who is the prince? Who? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, let me slow down. Who is the supreme architect? Us. Okay, I'm listening. Well, I want to say, like, us and us, but, like, are we, like, the supreme architects who, like, we build on a daily basis, like, we build buildings, we build ourselves, right? It's like building fall and stuff, but like building your seven chakras. We do, we do. But I wouldn't necessarily say that we are the supreme architect, but I know where you're going, I appreciate that. Yep. Uh, oh, you know uh, what? Let, let me, let okay. me, uh, allow me just for a second. I, you're saying, okay, okay. I'm going to agree with you on the fact of supreme architect. I'm going to agree with you on that, okay? And the reason I'm going to agree with you on the mere fact that the supreme architect versus the grand architect, there's a difference. Uh. <laughs> okay. Yep. Now, what else you got for me? Uh, that, that was it. That was it. Now, my question to you, brother, is why? What, uh, are you curious about Freemasonry? Actually, to be honest with you, I've always loved Masonry. Um, so the fact that, like, I like the fact that you guys, like, uh, do a lot of good charity work, but I'll, ever since when I was a kid, I've always, like, loved knowledge, and I've always, like, seek the light, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and every time I try to, like, you know, find information about you guys, it's always, like, the dumb, the dumb conspiracies coming up, like, you guys are devil worshippers and this and all that. <laughs> well, you know I do like Lucifer. <laughs> I'm going, go ahead, go, ahead, go bro. Yeah, I'm like, you know, you know, you know, people like Albert Pike and all that stuff, so it's like, you know, not telling me, like, the 
the real message of it. So that's why, like, you know, I'll, I'll study from, like, the Moors. You know, I'll study from, like, you know, you know, just a bunch of people, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I vote, and I do want to join, but the problem is, like, you know, I got I to gotta pay some medical bills that I owe. Okay. Before I do, because I want to, you know, I want to pay my dues and stuff. Okay. But okay. I, got, I got family members on Masons. I got a couple of friends that are. Uh-huh. So I'm just waiting on, I'm just waiting until I, I you know, you know, just, just finish, you know, just finish paying off my my medical bills, and until then, I'll go from there. Okay. You know? All right. Keep well. You know what, brother? Keep gathering that knowledge. You know, I, I would always, I always tell people that keep gathering knowledge. The ideal is you have a Masonic Bible. Now, yes. you having that Bible, what I wouldn't do. This is me from you on a serious tip. I wouldn't necessarily take what I have and just go out and hey, you know, I'm and and actually. Uh, perpetrate a fraud as far as saying you have been initiated into the craft. Oh, oh, no, I claim I'm a Mason. I don't tell people I'm a Mason. I don't, matter of fact, a lot of people I know don't really care, like, what I have to say about Masonry. You know what I mean? Because uh, to them, that's, they're like, oh, like, they're devil worshippers. That's why I don't really talk to the ignorant. You know what I mean? So I just keep my, my mouth closed. But I don't, I don't right. go around flying on something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's how it is. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not none of that stuff. Okay. Okay. So well, I, the day that I do become a Mason, then I'll tell people, like, hey, I'm a Mason. Okay. And so okay. Then I'm just a regular dude. Seeking oh. knowledge. <laughs> hey, you know what? At least you're awake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you know, people who don't seek knowledge are not people. And I'm, I, I don't really want to too much hold a conversation with them. Same here. Same here. I don't know. know. Like I said, like, people, people who, who don't want to listen or don't really have to hear, to hear what other people have to say, I don't I don't want to waste my time with them. You know okay. I mean? Right. So, right. And there and there's times like where I did tell, you know, like some of my friends like, Oh yeah, I'm about to become a Mason. Oh yeah, good luck when you get to the thirty third degree you're gonna sacrifice somebody. You better not sacrifice my ass, like Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. listen <laughs> they they listen to too much of that Illuminati on the Jay Z and Yeah, yeah, and, there you go, there you go. That's what I was actually looking for. They, you know and like, oh the Illuminati is this, but yeah, in a yeah. way like I don't believe in like Illuminati as like you know like the you know I don't want to go too deep into like you know like the Rothschilds or you know at what they know you know what I mean? Yeah, but see that's a whole nother. It's a, that's a whole that's nother, nother topic. Yeah, but it is. To say, to say like someone that's Illuminati, you know, that's saying like you're the enlightened one, he who seeks the light, who is the light, who mm-hmm. is the light. You know what I mean? Illumination. My real name actually means illumination. Mm-hmm. Sanskrit. Mm-hmm. You know, I just don't want to give my my personal name away. Okay. But, and and the reason why I picked that name, Ewe Khan, is just like just it's just a funny thing. I'm just a weird guy. <laughs> nah, that's not weird. One brother just posted, brother, become a Mason and you will see the light. <laughs> Somebody just yeah, posted man. that for you. So, you know, <laughs> hey, when you make that when you when you agree to do that, you know, holler at us. Hit us up. Let us know. Yep. You and, know? and another thing too is that like, um like I I'm sick and tired of like me, like um maybe you know, like, I'm, sick of, I'm really sick and tired of, like, who's, like, because I saw one of your videos, and, like, I agreed upon, like, who's clandestine, and who's, like, bogus, and who's this and that. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It's, like, and, like, to me, what, the only reason why I never wanted to join Mason was because, like, I didn't believe in that unity. Like, I believe in unity, but, like, I don't see the unity. In Ooh. Mason. But, see, I'm going to share this with you. It is individuals yeah. like you that's going to actually infuse Masons and Masonry. And I say that because you you have seen it from the outside, looking at us, whereas we think everything may be cool and everything may be chill. But you're like, oh, now I can't do that. You brothers are tripping, and you may be that yeah. very person that we need in order to see it from a person who was on the outside. Now you're coming in. You said, look, brothers, this is not what you're supposed to be teaching because this is not what it is. You know what I? You know what I'm yeah. doing? So, you know, whenever you make that decision, I, I wish you well, and I hope that you make that decision soon, you know, before I get too, too, many, too many grades in the head, you know. I'd like to know about it. Oh, and there's one more thing I do want to say. What's that? So, so one time, well, another thing, too, like, I was always, some odd reason, I was always obsessed with, like, the Shriners. Right? Uh-huh. Well, because, like, when I, when I first heard about the Shriners, because there was a Shriner temple in, in my area. Okay. The first thing I saw when I was a kid, it was, like, the Islam symbol, you know, like the moon and the crest and stars that remind me of Islam. Uh-huh. So, yeah, you know, I'm digging in and I'm reading a lot of things. Again, I don't want to go too deep into it. But, yeah, then I was, you know, one day I just figured, like, hey, let me call this uh, shrine. Cause then, I, then, but, and then I heard, like, you know, the Prince Hall. Actually, matter of fact, 
my good buddy of mine is a Prince Hall Freemason. Okay. And um, and then yeah, but I didn't get to ask him so many questions because I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, because because we didn't have the time to ask because we had to you know, we had to go do our thing. Mm-hmm. So I called the Shriner, the, the first Shriner, the not the ancient Egyptian, but the you know the the ancient Arabic order. Okay. And I asked him like, so if I became a a Prince Hall Freemason, can I join? You know, would I be able to join your 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 uh, temple? And then the person said no because we have different charities. So that's another reason to me it was like, oh, so no, look, because because we're recognized, but even though like they're recognized, but we can't join each other's, uh, you know, each other's temple or each other's uh, what's the word I'm looking for chapters. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Even though like we walk in the same light, and that's the whole thing about it. Mm hmm. So, yeah, brother Michael White. Like that changes where we can all recognize each other. And, Join each other's chapters and see like what you know what I mean like get both, get both degrees and right well money. brother uh, I think that was brother random uh, Raymond yes uh, brother Raymond said don't don't allow or don't let the recognition BS keep you away from Freemasonry uh, let that foolishness stop I let that foolishness stop me from being initiated for too many years yeah. so don't allow that to uh, oh yeah 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 you know. To me, I just want to—I just want to see the light. But I want to see it in both both ways. You know what I mean? Like I want to see like what the Prince Hall Masons are about, and what the regular Masons are about. Okay. So I want to learn both Masons. Well, I'm gonna let you know this here, see, brother. If I'm a Mason, I want to call him as a brother. But I want to talk to him about things. You know what I mean? Well, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to break it down to you this way. Yes. When you are initiated into the uh, into the fraternal order of Freemason, when you are initiated into this craft, a a a true Masons, uh, a true Mason understands that uh, 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 Freemasonry crosses all boundaries. Okay? Right. It is left up to his own discretion whether he finds you worthy or well qualified. Okay? Right. So I'm going to leave it right there, but I thank you for calling in and I appreciate you. Hey, stay tuned hey, in. What? Tell somebody about the show. You got another question? Uh, that'll be it, brother. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. And keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for everything. And, uh, you know, I enjoy your videos. Okay, Thank okay. You, you know, more of your videos. All right, well, I'm going to try to do what I can. I, you know, I, I just like to keep my light on. I like to share the knowledge. I can't take it with me when I'm dead. And, and, and I love that. And I love that. You know? I mean, I don't like when people shun the light away. You know oh, I mean? no. Uh, I'm not that one. So I appreciate I you calling me. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it once again. And uh, take care. Uh, of yourself, and I uh, well, and I hope one day that you will be uh, amongst the brothers. Thank you, thank you. All right, then take care now. Take care. Good night. Good night. So the lines are now back open six one nine two eight six zero six four two. So we're talking about the Masonic apron tonight, and I want to thank that brother for calling in. He had quite a few questions, kind of took us off the subject a little bit, but you know what? That's all right. He's curious about the organization. He's reading about it. He's finding out about it. And that's great. And we need to let other people know about the Fraternal Order of Freemasonry. Uh, you know, I, like I said, like I say all the time, it's a great organization. It is. And I was just reading some of the posts here in regards to the Masonic apron, brother. You guys are on some tonight. Uh, brother Maddox, the apostle, he said the point of the apron represents the sun is worn exactly over the solar or the sun per Brother uh, Maddox, maybe I should have called you before I even started to indulge myself in this thing in regards to the apron because you are you are on point on some of these things, and I appreciate that. Uh, definitely keep sharing sharing that knowledge and sharing that light. So when wearing the Masonic apron, we know there are three stages for which the, ma the Masons wear their aprons. And in the process of wearing them that way, we are taught the reason why we wear them that way. But we're never told why we wear the aprons, you know. And there's a difference between the reasons you wear them a certain way and why we wear them at all. And the process is, is that it deals strictly with the high priest. It deals strictly with the moral character of a man, you know, the intelligence of a man, the swiftness of an... I don't want to go there. But it deals, it deals with that. And if you can take that and apply it to your life as you wear that badge of innocence, that, that apron then you are truly uh, on a road of enlightenment, you know, where you, are, where you are able to learn to do your passions and be able to uh, work your way uh, 
um, within the Masonic uh, uh, pavement, you know, the black and white checkerboard, you know, and understanding the blazing star. When you're able to break that all down, and some aprons have all of that on it. You know, I've seen some that have the the the, the skulls on bones, the the grave, the occasion, the the uh, the chisel, the uh, you name it, it's on the apron. I've I've seen it all on there. But the ideal is is with all of that information on there, with all of that symbolism on that apron, wearing that apron is more than just part of the uniform of a master mason. It goes much deeper than that. It definitely does. The apron. So we are focused on working on a temple instead of on a pleasure. Whoa! I like that. Brother, I, oh man, I likes that. That right there set it off, brother. The apron. So we are focused on working on a temple instead of pleasure, of uh, instead of only pleasure. That set it off right there. And that's what we are actually working on. Remember, we're working on a temple not made by hands, where there's no nails or anything of iron that we're going to need to make it happen. But yet the symbolism in working to that of a mason is what we need in order to raise this temple up from a dead level to a living perpendicular. You know, able to shape that rough action to a perfect action to be able to be placed into the cornerstone that the, that the, uh, that the builders rejected. You are that cornerstone. You are the cornerstone that the builders rejected. We know that scripture says that Christ is the cornerstone. But as you progress in Freemasonry and you're placed in the northeast corner, which represents a place of darkness, which represents a place where the rough Ashley, where you're trying to work and to uh, um, uh, build yourself up. It's all about it's all about the individual and his works in the process. As you travel, you're going to find out whether you're worthy and well qualified. It's, it's, it's not even complicated, but we make it complicated. So let's see what else somebody has posted up. Brother Jackson, welcome aboard tonight. We're talking about the Masonic apron. If you have anything you want to add, please do put on the chat line and also you can make your call in 619-286-0642. That's the call in number tonight and we're talking about the Masonic apron. What I'm trying to stay away from, brothers, and I know some have asked me to elaborate on some stuff, but I'm trying to stay away from uh, the jurisdictional debate and, and stick strictly with the Masonic uh, topics and the things that we do as Masons. I think that'll be more helpful to us along the way instead of jurisdictional things, because when you get into jurisdictional things, you know, it, hey, my job is to stay out the bushes and keep my light on, okay? And that's, that, that's, that's jurisdiction business. Uh, whatever they do, the process is is that I want brothers to be uh, enlightened upon the work of the Freemasons. And if they want to contact me, you you can certainly do that. The email address is going to be Jose with an H, and that's going to be H O S E A L O D G E at yahoo.com. So if you want to contact me in regards to Freemason, you're certainly welcome to do so. I would only uh, if you're going to ask me a Masonic question. Uh, in regards to assisting or aiding you in your E8 works, I don't mind doing it. But if you are a person who has not yet been initiated in the craft and would like to know in regards to lodges in your area, you could do that too. You know, I'm quite sure there are brothers of Prince Hall or PHO, Prince Hall Origin, or Ancient Free and Accepted, uh, who would probably love to have you in their, uh, in their uh, lodge. Brothers of International, Modern Free. You know, I mean, to me, I'm that individual. I'm crossing all to all jurisdictions. If a brother is looking for a Masonic home, and and there's not one that I know of in his area, I'm going to find one for him, because I believe that being a part of this organization is going to help him to grow. And this should be what we should be considering for our youth, especially our young men. We should take masonry, and use that for for their trial. You know, uh, in some cultures, they have it to where the person who's becoming an adult, they go on this journey. They go uh, through this process of initiation. 
And, and I believe that masonry can do that for our youth. You know, when they hit 18, I know that some uh, jurisdictions have their youth organization, which is great. But for those of you who don't have your youth organization, I would encourage you to find the youth in your area or even at, at local schools and put together a fundamental program for them so they will know that the Masons assisted and aided them in their, in their development into man. You know, teach them about wearing a suit, how to dress and be uh, respectful towards the, the young girls in school. I mean, we can take this and really... Uh, working in in the aspect for the betterment of, of of our community, instead of using it and throwing and slinging back at each other, let's use masonry to do for what it's for, and that's to build. Definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> he said most haven't traveled with themselves, within themselves. You know the process of traveling within yourself. You know, when you're able to do that, when you're able to meditate and travel within yourself, man, you talking about being able to calm some still waters down. You know, and a lot of people can't gather that. A lot of people can't grab the fact that you're able to uh, calm the waters. You know, uh, when things happen in your life, you, you're able to be calm in the moment of, uh, of tragedy or, or, you know, some people just faint. Some people don't know what to do. But for those of us, who are able to uh, travel within ourselves, and for those of us who understand exactly what I'm saying, man, that's that's beautiful. <clears throat> and I say that because we all have experiences. My experience was that when my nephew passed away, um, I would say one of my favorite nephews, and he was coming to live with me, but he uh, got killed in a car accident. You know, one of those deep curves in the south. You know how them curves in the south, they, they ain't like your average curve. This was a deep curve. And they as they went into the curve, and and they didn't they didn't straighten themselves out and hit a tree. He, he got killed instantly. But the unique thing is, is, when I found out about that, I went into this like, okay, what to do next move, mode. It wasn't that I, I broke down crying. It wasn't that I panicked. It was like, okay, my nephew has been killed. Here's the next step. Here's what I'm going to do to help better the situation. Some people just can't act in a time of crisis. They break down. What Mason has taught me to do is to calm down so I can think clearly about what I'm about to do and the decisions I'm about to make. Really, you know, you learn that in the first degree. You really do. But some people don't really get that. So I encourage you to actually go into your studies as an inter-apprentice and break that down for you. Have someone to help you along the way. For real. Now back to the apron and knife. The Masonic apron and why we wear it. You know, I'm trying to stay on topic and I appreciate for you hanging on tonight. I would like to put together a complete Masonic address data with all the lodges from across the country. Well, Brother Jackson, that sounds great. But I'm going to tell you now, brother, the problem that you're going to run into is with jurisdictions not willing to share that information with you. Simple as that. Now, what I can share with you, Brother Jackson, is the mere fact of what we have here as members of John G. Jones Grand Lodge of California. We have uh, uh, our Masonic book as far as uh, those who can visit us and recognition. We have those, that particular book, and I don't mind sharing it you know, with you. <clears throat> uh, so we can we can start with that. But as far as you trying to get everyone on board to do it, <sighs> brother, that's going to be a tough road to hope. Simple as that. That's going to be tough, 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 tough to go. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. So as we begin this journey in Freemason, we're given this apron and we're told uh, in regards to it being a badge of innocence, we're told how to uh, approach the East and how to wear this apron, which is supposed to be precious to us. But I see a lot of us sometimes don't understand that it's the character, it is the development, it is the, it is the process of growing and becoming a man in regards to this apron and knowing that uh, as you progress 
into Freemasonry and, and you enter the holies of hollies, it, it becomes what we call the high priest. All of that entails of why we wear that apron. You know, and some and some brothers like Brother Maddox and a couple other brothers posted some very uh, good things in regards to the Masonic apron. Some things I didn't even know, and I appreciate that. So I hope that you've gotten some out of this tonight. And I don't really have anything else uh, to really break down as far as that apron is concerned. No more than what I've already shared. But as I continue to research, as I continue to gather my knowledge, I'm going to share it with you. And so... As I get ready to sign off, I want to say I appreciate everyone for coming on. As I kneel down tonight, I remember my brothers and my sisters in my prayers. And may the grand architect of the universe truly look over you and bless each of you. As always, stay out the bushes, keep your light on, and thank you for sharing your information with me. I'm out.